Mars, the red planet, our next home. Humanity is facing for the first time the adventure to colonize another planet. But once there, what are we going to do to survive? Where will we live? How will we build and with which resources? We are Extreme Thoughts, a group of civil engineering students from U UPC Barcelona Tech. And we are here to answer these questions. We present you how to build in extreme environments the case of Mars. Mars is 228 million kilometers away from the Sun, that is one and a half times farther than Earth is. That means that temperatures there are much lower than on Earth. They, ca they can get from minus 128 degrees near the poles at winter to 20 degrees Celsius positive near the equator at summer. Temperatures can move in a range of 90 degrees in a single day. The atmospheric pressure is very low, between 6 and 8 millibars. But it can get to 12.4 millibars in the deepest areas of the planet, and up to 0.4 millibars at the top of Olympus Mount, which is the highest mountain in the solar system. Gravity on Mars is about one third of Earth's, making everything three times lighter. Finally, its thin atmosphere is mainly composed by CO2, making it unbreathable. Mars also lacks a proper magnetic field, so the radiation that hits the planet is higher than on Earth. To build the structures on Mars, we have three options. Building underground, cover a spaceship, and build from scratch from the materials already there. For the first option, which is building underground, we could use the system of caves located on the north slope of Arcea Mons. For the second option, we can cover the spaceship we arrive on the planet with regolith, which is the Martian dust. The third option is making building materials with the resources found on Mars. On Earth, the most common building materials are cement. If we want to make cement on Mars, first we need to know which materials we have available there. Thanks to the different missions that have visited Mars, such as the Viking, Pathfinder, the one we can see in the image, and Curiosity, we have data about the oxide composition of regolith. We also know that regolith is pretty homogeneous all over the planet due to millions of years of sandstorms. Martian soil and rocks are composed of oxides of silicon, aluminium, iron, magnesium, calcium, titanium, sulfur, chlorine and bromine. The elements in which we are interested on are for making Portland and pozzolanic cement, and calcium oxide, which has a presence between 5 and 8%, and silicon, which has a presence between 41 and 61%. For making sulfur cement, we are interested in sulfur oxide, which has a presence between 1 and 9% on the Martian surface. As all these compounds have very long names, engineers use a nomenclature of abbreviators. For example, for CAO, we use the letter C. For silicon oxide, we use the letter S, and so on. This is especially useful for very long compounds like CSH and CAH. Another ingredient we haven't mentioned yet is water. We will need water for some of the cements we are proposing, so we must make sure it's available. As we can see in the water phase diagram, we need for, li for, for having liquid water at least a pressure of 6 millibars. A millibar is a thousandth of an, atmos an atmosphere, so it's 0 0.006 atmospheres. We will also need positive temperature. And you will ask yourself, where on Mars we can, have, we can find these conditions? The answer is in Valles Marineris, located at the equator of the planet, as you can see in the image is this big valley over there. Now that we have all the data controlled, it's time to explore which kind of cements can be made. First, we can do Portland cement. Second, we can do pozzolanic cement. And a third type of cement, totally different from the previous ones, sulfur cement. Portland cement is the most, usic, the most used cement on Earth. The raw materials for earthly Portland cement 
are calcium oxide, silicon oxide, aluminium oxide and iron oxide, all present in Martian regolith. Gypsum and water are also needed. Portland cement is typically composed of between 16 67% of calcium oxide, between 17 and 25% of silicon oxide, 3 and 8% of aluminium oxide, and between 0.5 and 6% of iron oxide. As we saw, calcium oxide counts as only about 6% of the regolith, so some way must be found to increase this percentage. A way to do it would be using a high energy microwave furnace, which would boil the regolith, evaporating the oxide with lower boiling points than calcium oxide. The resulting liquid must be cooled down in a container with ice. The resulting product should be milled into powder. On Earth, we would proceed to mix the cement with gypsum, which acts as a setting retarder and later water in order to hydrate it and build. Although the atmospheric pressure on Ballas Marineris is enough to have liquid water, the temperature would diverge too much during the process of hydration. Temperatures below zero are inevitable during the 28 days that Portland cement takes to harden. That means that water would freeze at some point, making a current curing impossible. A way to avoid that is using the dry mix steam injection system. It consists of exposing the dry mixture of cement and aggregate to a 180 degrees Celsius steam in a confined chamber for 18 hours. In conclusion, making Parlon cement on Mars is complicated and differs very much from the way how it is made on Earth. A variation from traditional Parlon cement is the pozzolanic cement. It consists in the addition of pozzolana to hydrate lime. Its advantages respect to Parlon cement are numerous, especially if we are building on Mars. First of all, it only needs three ingredients, calcium oxide, water and pozzolana to make pozzolanic cement. What are pozzolana, will you ask? Well, pozzolans are silicoaluminate rocks, which means that are made of silicates and aluminates. They are mainly volcanic rocks, of which there are plenty on Mars. Pozzolanic cement has the following characteristics. First, pozzolans don't have hydraulicity. Second, they don't mix with water, only to hydrate. And third, they react, they react in the pozzolanic reaction. As we can see in the image, this reaction consists in adding pozzolans, portlandite, which is hydrated calcium oxide, and water, which forms CSH and CAH. With this reaction, four things happen. First, CH proportion is reduced and CSH is increased. Second, it has better durability. Third, there is an increase in a long-term resistance. And four, it has a slower velocity of reaction and a lower hydration heat than cement without additions. Sulfur concrete consists of elemental sulfur and Martian soil aggregate, sand, gravel or crushed stone. A mixture of 50% sulfur and 50% Martian soil with maximum aggregate size of 1 mm is needed. The mixture is heated to 240 Celsius, the melting point of sulfur. This melted substance is mixed with regolith and then solidifies when letting it cool down with no need of water, which is a great advantage. After cooling, the material achieves a high strength and has good chemical resistance. It has 50 megapascals of compressive strength, which means two and a half times stronger than the most commonly used concrete on Earth. The cement solidifies in about one hour. Even fast setting concrete takes 24 to 48 hours to set, and regular concrete needs up to 28 days. One advantage of this cement is that it is reusable and it can be melted down and recast easily. One important issue on Mars is radiation. Mars' atmosphere doesn't protect as much as Earth's atmosphere, as it's much thinner. 
For this reason, building must protect more if we want people that live in there not suffer serious health problems. On the one hand, Portland concrete, made up with dense aggregates, provides one of the best shieldings against radiation. While, on the other hand, we have good shielding made of regolith, it should be between 1 and 1.5 meters thick. Another thing to take into account is that the lower the point on the surface, the lower is the radiation received. One of the chemical reactions that affect the most to the durability of Portland cement is carbonation. The CO2 that is on Mars atmosphere reacts with calcium hydroxide and it forms calcium carbonate. This reaction generates the cracking and detachment of the outer surface of the concrete and it's accelerated if the porosity of the concrete is bigger. Although this happens, the resistance isn't affected. In conclusion, making Portland cement on Mars might be difficult, and the better options might be pozzolanic cement and sulfur cement. We hope this video has been interesting to you. Don't forget to like and share the video, and thanks for watching.